r slash ask reddit what's a rule that was implemented somewhere that massively backfired my company has a strict no alcohol policy you can't begin work within 10 hours of having had a drink so whenever there's a staff shortage and they need me to come in right away guess who just cracked open a cold one company build at 6 a.m me don't ducking judge me sorry boss I'd really like to help you out but I had two beers with dinner last night around 11. I can't go on shift before 9am. My work has an infraction system. If you're a minute late that's half a point. If you're up to 4 hours late that's half a point. So if you're going to be a minute late you might as well be 4 hours late because it's the same penalty. Edit. For those who keep pointing out that you would miss 4 hours of pay, I know. My work is weird and lets you fill in missing time with PTO at the end of the work week. We also don't get sick days. So you have to take PTO if you are sick. And even then you're likely to get the points because you called in less than 24 hours before your shift starts. It's not an issue if you get half a point and don't get another for 6 months because the first one will have fallen off by then. I received two written warnings about being late at my last retail job. One for 10 minutes. The other for not being there 15 minutes before the store opened. Instead I was there 5 minutes before. The people who didn't show up at all, or called in sick 5 minutes before their shift never got a warning. I told myself if there was ever another time I knew I was going to be late, I should just turn around and call in sick instead. Never got to test that in the end though, because I ended up getting a job in my field a little while after. I ended up getting a job in my field a little while after. So you're a farmer? English law in Wales set the death penalty for stealing a sheep. Welshmen caught stealing sheep would claim to be making love to them. They would get a lesser penalty for bestiality. The consequence of this is a Welshman gained a reputation as sheep shaggers. Sure, that's what the Welsh would like you to believe. I got to lettuce bang before I thought. Ha, huh. this experience feels familiar somehow, and looked at the username. Feels like a while since I saw fresh you slash Vargas in the wild. My institute banned porn sites in its Wi-Fi. Most people weren't tech savvy enough or bold enough to ask how to bypass it. Then the institute banned Facebook. Everyone learnt using proxy in matter of days. Let's just say the servers were under heavy pressure than onwards. They have blocked Instagram. Facebook. Twitter etc at my work. Only issue is we're a software development firm so we all know what a VPN is and how to use it. Edit. Thank you for the silvers. Kind strangers. Colon. My company is big on pushing engagement via Twitter. Only problem? Twitter is blocked for being social networking. A famous example from Freakonomics was when a daycare started charging a small fine for parents who picked up their children late. Instead of resulting in more on-time arrivals, the new policy actually caused more late pickups. This is because the parents were originally worried that a late pickup would be a significant burden on the daycare employees. But because the fine was so small, only a few dollars, they decided that it must not be a big inconvenience for the daycare. I really like this one because, unlike many of the other examples in this thread, the outcome was totally unexpected. Increasing the cost of being late caused more people to be late? That seems to contradict basic laws of economics. But, of course, the twist being that guilt is a really powerful motivator that disappears if you allow people to pay to no longer feel guilty. Also, the infamous Barbados vs Grenada soccer match. The organizers of the 1994 Caribbean Tournament Cup had a rather odd change to the rules for extra time. If a game was still drawn at full time, it would go to extra time but the first goal scored would win. This is perfectly normal. The golden goal rule. What was different is that they ruled that winning this way would count as having won by two goals for the purpose of tournament qualification, instead of just one. Barbados went into a match against Grenada needing two goals to qualify for the main tournament. If they lost, or won by only one goal, Grenada would qualify instead, under the regular rule. This would mean that if the match went to extra time, there would basically be no point Barbados playing because even if they scored, they would only win by one goal, and not qualify. But the two point rule would motivate them to play on. Sound good? Well, you might be able to guess what happened. The match looked like it was about to end with Barbados 2-1 Grenada, a win for Barbados, but not the two goals they needed. 
So Barbados deliberately scored an own goal in the last few minutes of the match, making the score 2-2. Hoping to trigger extra time and a chance to score the magic 2 value goal, the Grenada players quickly realized they could do the same, score an own goal to make the match 3-2 to Barbados, which would have Barbados winning by only one goal, so Grenada would qualify. But the Barbados players realized that too, and so they began to defend Grenada's goal. So for the last 7 minutes of the match, Grenada were trying to score a goal in either net, since scoring a goal against Barbados would give them 3-2 and they would win the match, and scoring in their own goal would make it 3-2 to Barbados so they would lose the match but win the qualification, and Barbados were defending both. Amazingly Barbados did actually manage to do so, successfully defending themselves while half of their team were defending Grenada's goal against Grenada, and then scored the golden goal in extra time and qualified. I'm really happy I scrolled down this far because this is funny as shit. Alcohol bans at college football games has led to increased intoxication problems because fans are loading up before going in the stadium. Universities love to duck up with alcohol related things. My university decided to pull over campus buses on weekend nights and give out tickets to drunk passengers, as well as look out for walking drunks. The following month had more DUIs than the entire previous year. Everyone's excuse was they were scared to walk or take the bus, so they drove. So glad UT Austin got rid of that. They sell $5 tall boys outside the stadium. $8 inside. Lowered all their food and non-alcoholic drink prices this year too. I worked at Macy's one Christmas and found out the reason why you can never find anyone at the registers is because they don't allow employees to stand at the register because it's intimidating. I can't tell you how many times I gave up trying to purchase something there because I couldn't find anyone to ring me up. This so much. Like. I get the goal but it's a whole lot more intimidating when I can't figure out how I'm expected to buy anything. JC Penney's did it even worse. They simultaneously implemented two policies, among others, get rid of registers so sales staff would check you out on the spot, and have employees wear plain clothes to seem more accessible. The result? Predictably, nobody could figure out how to check out. Edit. Added citation here. Edit 2. Duck. Fixed link. Last summer in Sweden, bus drivers in some counties started wearing shorts due to the heat wave. After being denied to continue doing so by management, they started wearing skirts instead. Dress code policies get banned shorts, but not skirts. This happens a lot every summer in UK schools. Boys turn up in shorts, get told to go home because it's not allowed so groups of them go in skirts because there isn't a rule about those, but normally gets printed in the local paper and sometimes picked up by bigger outlets. Gets the school some bad publicity and they usually change the rules to allow shorts. Really odd that lads can't wear shorts, they work just fine with a school uniform. Just William springs to mind. One of the high rise blocks I have to maintain has a sign saying anything left here will be removed due to it being a fire risk. People just dump the shit there they don't want like fridges and sofas and by law we have to take it. Duck me right at it. I have no authority to put up cameras as they are council blocks and I'm a council worker that has zero help from management because quite frankly they don't give a shit because they don't have to remove it. Congrats British taxpayers. You pay me to remove pieces of shit's flitterping daily. I'm sorry for the shitty human beings on this earth. Where is this? Asking for a friend. Pretty sure you just provided a tip here. R slash an ethical life pro tips. HTTPS colon slash slash EN Wikipedia Org wiki cobra effect the British government was concerned about the number of venomous cobra snakes in Delhi. The government therefore offered bounty for every dead cobra. Initially this was a successful strategy as large numbers of snakes were killed for the reward. Eventually, however, enterprising people began to breed cobras for the income. When the government became aware of this, the reward program was scrapped causing the cobra breeders to set the now worthless snakes free. As a result, the wild cobra population further increased. The apparent solution for the problem made the situation even worse. Edit. Apparently someone else already posted this. My bad for not checking the thread. Sholv hired Ricky Tiki TV. They would have turned him into a stud and then used his kids to get rid of the excess cobras. Then after the cobras are gone. 
You've got too many mongooses, mongees, and now you need to breed a bunch of hawks to eat them. After too many hawks, we'll need to breed cobras to eat the hawk eggs. Dry counties were meant to reduce use of alcohol in certain areas, but they result in people who want to get drunk driving further away from home to do so, increasing the odds and frequency of drunk driving accidents. Also many attempt to rescind dry county laws end up getting counted by campaigns paid for by the bars and liquor stores that set up on the edge of dry counties, typically under the guise of religious messages. This exact thing happened here a few years ago when it was on the ballot, two measures were up. One to allow alcohol sales at the state level, and one to allow it at the county level. A few counties passed it at the county level but voted against it at the state level, so that their county would be wet in the middle of dry counties and they'd get out of county revenue. My county voted against it at both levels, with help of $1 mm in contributions from the largest liquor store just on the other side of the county line. We're a county with three colleges and they currently get all of that revenue. If we were to go wet, it'd cost them far more than they contribute to the campaign against it. It sucks. Central Arkansas I'm guessing. At least we have all these private clubs to drink at now. The worst part is all the restaurants have to buy from liquor stored instead of distributors. The county line liquor stores just love it. In French Indochina. There was a major problem with rodents eating supplies and bringing disease. Given the plentiful supply of cheap unemployed workers, the colonial authorities thought they could be used to kill the rats and bring their numbers down. The French had a somewhat racially prejudiced view of the work ethic of the locals, so decided to pay them per rat killed rather than per hour worked. Each was compensated for every dead rat they handed over. A year or so later, the colonial authorities discovered the peasants had set up rat breeding farms in the jungle. Sounds similar to the cobra effect. I had a teacher that told us about this happening in Italy, and when they took away the bounty for the snakes people just released the snakes they had been breeding into the wild, in numbers larger than the population was before trying to get rid of them. Yesterday in Kenya, our governor in Nairobi banned public transport from getting to town so people had to walk long distances to work, and since we don't have enough pavements, people ended up walking on the roads, like 3000, and there was a traffic jam that lasted for more than 5 hours. The next day the ban was removed, people walking on the highway. Easiest way to fix things is to inconvenience people with money and power. What was the goal of banning public transport? Washington state made it mandatory for schools to drop their room temperatures to save on electricity. The result, teachers brought their own heaters into their offices and use of electricity increased. Not a law. By my school does this and have made it clear it costs dollar sign 1000 slash day to heat our building. But they drop the temp and it can be 50 degrees. F. In the morning in my classroom, everyone has space heaters, which are illegal. Fire code, admin and maintenance freak out over it, but refuse to turn up the heat, as they sit in their separately heated offices at a comfortable temp. Get some GTX 480 in the school computers, they are cheap, and generate tons of heat. Not sure if it is still the case as I graduated many years ago, but where I went to college, the hospitals had a thing where if someone came in with alcohol poisoning, and they were underage, then they'd also call the cops. So of course what happened was when underage kids really should have gone to the hospital, their friends wouldn't call an ambulance because of fear the cops would punish people. Luckily, while I was there there weren't many deaths due to alcohol poisoning, but there were more than zero. Edit. For clarity, I wasn't saying the people calling would get punished by the cops. I was saying the person with alcohol poisoning would be punished. But people still didn't want to call for fear that their friend may get in legal trouble. My state. Michigan, has no consequence reporting and help. If you are underage and call yourself or have someone call for you, you won't be charged at all. If the cops are the ones to pick you up, it is your fault and you will be charged. Also, they change underage drinking to a misdemeanor now versus a felony like how it used to be. Edit. Felony should be misdemeanor, and misdemeanor should be a civil infraction. I was always told that it would show up pretty easily for jobs so I thought it was a felony. It was actually a misdemeanor. Wait underage drinking used to be a felony? WTH. I worked somewhere with a clean desk policy on Friday afternoons. 
The common way round this was that everyone would just sweep all their paperwork into an envelope, stick it in the internal mail and then it would arrive back on your desk on Monday morning. You wouldn't just, like, put it in a drawer. No, we didn't have much drawer space and that tended to be where people kept tools, stationery or custom bits of glassware that they'd had specially blown. At one point in history, the president of Paraguay tried to eliminate racism by making it illegal to marry someone within your own ethnic group. Needless to say, this was quite racist. Ha 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 ha. I think you mean jaja ja 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 ja. You have to eat whatever you touch was a rule in my kindergarten which led to all the children touching all the food to call dibs on it. Does that also apply to like, glue and shit, oh god, or the other children? Tag suddenly becomes lethal. Head teacher at the school I worked at made it a rule that the primary age kids, 5'11", weren't allowed to run when they were out in the playground. That was fun to try and enforce. Let's not allow young children to run on the playground. During their recess, at school, r slash what could go wrong? Teachers, no running during recess. Also teachers, oh my god these kids won't sit still and listen, they're bouncing off the walls. Teachers, https, i, imga, comsave 2 gc, jpg. Air pollution became a big problem in late 80s early 90s Athens. Mostly due to the number of old, heavily polluting cars on the roads. So the Greek government made a law where only cars with odd numbered final digits on their number plates, 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9 etc, could be driven on odd numbered days, 1st, 3rd, 5th etc, and only evenly numbered cars could drive on evenly numbered days. Sounds great doesn't it? They'll have the number of cars on their roads right? Nope. They doubled it. Everyone bought one old. Highly polluting car that had an odd numbered plate and another with an even numbered plate. Nobody could park and the air was worse than before. In Mexico City the exact same thing happened. It also made worse the traffic problem. Mexico City and my city are 2 hours driving away. But if you try to exit the city around 5pm, you are expecting to be 6-8 hours stuck. Middle school wanted to create a trash free environment so they removed the trash cans from the parking lots halls, and cafeteria, then just told the kids to toss your trash when you get home or in a classroom the amount of litter skyrocketed overnight. After a week or so they brought back the cans. That's dumb as hell. For the inverse of this policy, Walt Disney started to study the way people acted throughout the park and found that a trash can every 30 feet dramatically reduces littering. Edit. Damn. My first blow up comment. What shall I do with all of my newfound karma now? A hotel I used to work for decided they were having an alcohol free holiday party. This didn't sit well with the people who'd been working there for years and were accustomed to a full bar at the party. The staff parking lot ended up being full of people drinking in their cars trying to get a good buzz to carry them through the party and most people ended up getting way drunker than they would have so the party was a shit show. Friend had a non-alcohol wedding. Nearly everyone took ecstasy instead. Complete opposite of the sober event the parents wanted. I'm having trouble imagining the type of couple who would have a sober wedding. But all their friends would do ecstasy at their wedding. The previous school I worked at decided that all shirts needed to have the school name or emblem. Which was a fancy letter E. On them to be dress code appropriate. That's all the handbook said. No clarification on how the name or emblem was designed or the color or if it had to be permanently affixed to the clothing. The students hated the policy and, being in high school, looked for any loophole possible. They found one due to the lack of clarity of the handbook policy. The kids would make paper E's and pin them to their shirts. Thus, they could wear whatever they wanted and by pinning the E to the shirt, were still dress code compliant. I thought it was pretty genius. The administration did not. There's never been in a time in school where I thought, gee, administrators are doing such a favor for us edit. Thanks for the upvotes. In my experience, administrators were always the big bads behind ridiculous rules. Eliminating responsibility and not allowing kids to be themselves for example, no trading cards, no tech decks, no gamma boys, no rough housing, no red rover, uniforms. High school students were wearing inappropriate shirts, 
not grade schoolers, but whole school district implemented them anyway. No jackets in class unless they were school branded. No selling of snacks gum to other students. ETC. Porn being banned on Tumblr Reddit. Thanks Tumblr for the free internet points. Considering the timing. Kinda feels like this thread was made in light of that. I can see the site being maimed because of this. Worked for a warehouse 4 days a week, 11am 930pm Monday to Thursday, they reiterated many times during the interview process that overtime was optional. My first day my supervisor told me that overtime is indeed optional, but if you don't stay for overtime then everybody else has to stay even later. So if you do leave on time, don't come back, I whatever, I didn't mind the extra hours too much, although at 10. 5 hour shift is already long, but the bonus was that we could go early if all the orders were done. As you can imagine, the good workers busted their ass from start to finish cutting as many corners, good and bad ones, as they could in order to get out early. Normally this ended up with us being able to leave around 15 minutes early or on a really good day where the stars aligned. Re, everybody showed up. We could leave as early as 7.30 or 8, however, leaving that early only happened once or twice a year at most. Overtime was every week. Every single Monday we would work until 2am. 11am to 2am isn't ideal when you have no idea when you're off. At around 7pm we'd start to get an idea if we're in for another hour or another 6. One of the genius new hires mentioned to the boss in the office how he was hoping to get out by 6. Oh good. Apparently the boss was thinking us leaving early was a common occurrence now and decided that nobody was going to be leaving early anymore. Sweep or dust or whatever. But nobody leaves until 9.30. All of a sudden we were late every single day without fail. Why? We were working our asses off to get out early but failing every day and ending up on time. Or still late. By taking away our ability to leave early. Everybody gave up working hard. Slow down. We've got another hour left anyways. I'm not sweeping. Dut. Went from about 45 hours a week to 55. 13 hours every day. Nobody ever left early anymore. But nobody left on time either. Losses for everybody involved because the boss didn't realize that us leaving early for 2 days out of a year actually gave us the daily motivation to work our asses off the other 360. TL. Dr. Boss put a stop to leaving early. No incentive to work our asses off anymore means paying overtime every day. I'm glad you were getting paid overtime. I was worried about that until the end. The whole mandatory voluntary aspect is bullshit though. Hate that nonsense. Wouldn't it be Imsnagement's best interest to not have people working over 40 hours in a week? Edit since I got a lot of responses about benefits and training. Etc. I meant in this specific case where it's clearly not necessary to have the 10 hour day. Every day. Especially when some days could go more than 10 hours. It'd feel like they could save on overtime by trying to keep as close to 40 hours as possible. Catholic school. This school started out not having a problem with Harry Potter. Library had every available book at the time. Not all were even written yet. Some paranoid parent cried satanism and witchcraft so the school banned Harry Potter. Suddenly Harry Potter books are an underground commodity. The school had a black market trade for new and used Harry Potter books and things only got worse when expulsion was threatened for being caught with one. A new Harry Potter book was worth its weight in gold. Finally the school had to go all the way to the bishop about the Harry Potter books and he said nah the books don't really teach satanism. What's all this about a black market book trade? So the school lifted the ban and told the parents to cool it. Doesn't this kind of happen in one of the Harry Potter books when Umbridge bans the issue of the quibbler where Harry told the truth about Voldemort returning? Suddenly everyone had to get their hands on it and read it because it was prohibited? It's called the Streisand effect and it applies to anything that is banned, hidden, removed, or censored. The act of banning it often publicizes the banned material and motivates people to seek it out. HTTPS colon slash slash en wikipedia org wiki streisand effect The military used to have a two beer lunch rule. They never specified the size of the beers. Walmart used to have a similar rule. One drink on lunch with no specification what a drink consisted of. One beer, one shot, one bottle, das boot filled with Hennessy. 
I worked at a contract agency that works with child protective services. CPS policy is to never tell the parent who called CPS on them. But my agency's policy was to always inform the primary caretaker if one of our social workers called it in. Obviously, this irrevocably destroyed our rapport with our clients. Imagine telling a parent you called CPS on them only to knock on their door the next week to listen to their concerns. The agency made an a shout out of us, and all potential for case progression was out the door. Stupidest rule, if you ask me. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.